I don't know what better way to do this. And I think today's the best day to do it. I look for signs. I don't always go for them. I usually resist the signs that I see, but when I see a sign that just really stands out to me, I go for it. Sometimes it turns out to be not nearly what you thought it was, but there was something. But only as much as what could have been made of it just because you took action. Nothing really all that special. Things happened just because you did something. Not a whole lot more or less than what would have happened had you not done anything at all. So today I come home and not even five minutes after I come home, there's just about 500 crows all over the place. Surrounding my entire block. So I decided to go for a walk. And talk about this. I'm talking about this for me. It's selfish. But I feel like I've held back on a lot of things that I've wanted to say. And that maybe now's a good time to to talk about it. Just get some things off my chest again. Again. It's been 14 years, 14 years next month since my mom passed away. I woke up this morning, I'd never been so angry. Angry at my mom, angry at somebody who died 14 years ago. And I don't wanna be mad and I don't know why. I tell you the last thing I want to think is that the reason why things don't go as well for me as they do is because of something my mom did. I know that, I know that what, what I experienced wasn't normal, but I know for a fact that people have experienced worse. People have, there, people have had it worse than me. People have had it so much worse than me. What I went through growing up was nothing compared to some people. And I'm tired of making something out of nothing. I personally know people who have lived through hell and back. People I still know today that have had horrible things happen in their lives. People that I personally don't think deserve it, but it happened. So I never, ever, ever want to put my problems off on my mom. I just can't. I just can't see myself doing that. I don't see it. I just don't see it. Why am I mad at my mom? Good question. Why am I mad at my mom? I don't know. I feel like what I went through with my mom made me a stronger person. I'm having an argument with nobody. My, from as long as I can remember, my mom was doing crazy drugs that ruin your life from as, from as long as I can remember. I mean, as, at least from what I was told. 
I, I know for a fact that she was. I would find glass pipes that didn't, didn't seem to make any sense to me. I didn't know what they were for. And <clears throat> my mom, if I would ask her what they were, I would show them to her and say, hey, well, what's, what's this? And she'd say, uh, oh, they're, um, I made those, I made those so you guys can go blow bubbles in the backyard. Well, it was a meth pipe. I actually believed her. I didn't know what, I didn't know what they were. I knew nothing about that. When I get into these details, it's, it's really sad because it, it, it's, they're just such sad details. But what happened to my mom was gross. I watched her teeth turn crooked, and yellow, and green, and fall out of her mouth. I watched all the hair in the front of her head turn gray and look like little firecracker smoke streams. And remember, as, as a little kid, I, I shouldn't even smile, but it was so weird to watch my mom's teeth fall out. Like she would wake up, she would be asleep for days. She'd be asleep for days and then she'd wake up one morning and she'd come running out of her room crying and she'd be like, oh, Greg, it's my dad's name. I lost a tooth. I was like, well, stop doing meth and maybe your teeth would stop falling out. Quit smoking crack. It was just, I didn't know, we didn't know. I wonder how much my dad knew that the reason her teeth were falling out was because she was smoking meth. She would be awake for days on end, sometimes all week. And my dad, just to support us, and even in the late 80s, 90s, he would be up at four o'clock in the morning. I'd wake up sometimes and it'd be four o'clock in the morning and my dad would be leaving to work. And he wouldn't come home till 10 o'clock at night, sometimes later. I would only see him, I'd be lucky to see him on the weekends. And so we'd be stuck with this mom, with my mom, who, you know, she, she had some motherly instincts. She raised us. She, um, did her best, I guess. She could have done better. Her best definitely wasn't good enough if that's what it was. I remember this one time she, she, we smoked pot, but I didn't, wasn't, we weren't meant to smoke pot. She was smoking pot and she just, we were supposed to put it in her mouth. She would blow it in her mouth and then we'd blow it out to pretend like we were smoking too. And first she did my brother and then she did, do it to, did it to me. She took a hit of some weed, she blew it into my mouth and I took a big gulp and just sucked it down. And oh man, I blew it out, ran to the bathroom, just puking. I, I was just throwing up in the bathroom. It was insane. I was, I think I was four or five years old. Yeah. She was such a mess to see her. Like for so many days, she would be, anyways, back to the point, that's besides the point. But for so many days, she'd be, a, she'd just be awake, just tweaking and cleaning the house and cleaning the house and digging through her purse and digging through this and digging through that. I always knew something was odd about it, but it never, nothing ever clicked to me. I, never, I was way too young to understand what the hell was going on. And then she would just be out and then she would sleep. You know, the morning would come and she'd still be in bed. And you know, we'd be hungry, four or five years old. And we'd be like, mom, we're hungry. Oh, she said, she'd give us our coffee. Like, here, go put this in a microwave for a minute. I'm like, okay, we go take her coffee, put it in the microwave for, we just push one minute. We figured that out eventually. Bring her coffee back to her carefully, walk this you know, hot coffee back to her. And she's like, oh, thanks, babe. And she'd take a sip and then she'd put it down and she'd go back to sleep. You know, an hour later, we'd come back, mom, mom, we're hungry, wake up. And same thing, okay, I'll put my coffee in the microwave, put it for one minute, bring it back. Uh, it's the same thing over and over again. Then when she finally would wake up, well, of course we would have usually have gotten into all kinds of stuff, just gone through everything and <laughs> done some crazy shit. You know, we'd make a mess, whatever. One time I almost burned the house down. Probably twice I almost burned the house down. 
And it made me wonder how often is this gonna happen? But if my mom was awake, I wouldn't have been getting into stuff. I wouldn't be putting wrapping socks over a freaking lamp with no lampshade. I didn't know any better. I could have burned the house down. And I'm just gonna blame my mama for that. But fuck, when she would come to, when she would finally wake up, she would beat the shit out of us for everything that she found. And then while beating the crap out of us, she would just threaten, threaten to tell our dad when he got there. It's just over and over again. Well, I'm gonna tell your dad. I'm gonna tell your dad when he gets here. Just craziness. So we would always be scared because my dad, he always had a strict discipline. He actually kept a wooden paddle up on the wall. And so after getting beaten up by our mom, she would like grab us by the arm and dig her hands, her nails into our arms to where it would leave crescent scars, uh, uh, scabs on our arms. That's from where she would grab us, and dig her nails in, and then pick us up over her head sometimes and then throw us across the room. Scary stuff. She beat the fuck out of us. She didn't know how to discipline us. She didn't have any adult discipline. Her own, when she would, her way was just like, whenever she would get mad, it would just be, go crazy, go ape shit, beat, beat us up, fight us, kick our ass, show us how much bigger she was than us. That was her way, that was her method. But she had such a, I mean, I don't, I don't blame her. I, I she was crazy but it wasn't her fault. I don't know, I don't know where to, I don't even know. I mean, what happened to her was just not fair. A lot of you know what happened to my mom. My grandpa was an illegal immigrant. He came across the border illegally through the coyote. And he was a child molester. He was a rapist. He was one of those people that you actually hear about. He abused my mom. And she knew nothing but darkness from a very, very young age. And that's why I think she took the path she took and made mostly bad decisions all her life and just didn't want to do anything but tweak and smoke crack until all of her teeth fell out and her hair turned gray. The last time I saw her, she was walking like Frankenstein. It was scary. I don't even think I any, even said anything to her. But I remember it was a few months after that, maybe a, half, a, half a year, my dad says, I'm just waiting for the call that I find out that you know, he wasn't trying to be mean, but he's like, I'm just waiting for the call that I find out that your mom's dead. And I kind of felt the same way, and I didn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't upset about that. I, I agreed. I, I totally knew it. I knew what kind of life my mom was living, and I knew it was just, you know, she, there was no way at the point that, she, uh, by the time I was 15, my mid-teens, I knew that she was just too far gone to be saved. Even in her early 20s, or uh, 40s, she was, she was 40 something. 42 years old, 43 years old. I knew it was just too much. It was too late. And she was just a mess. And she didn't care. She was just still doing the same thing. I remember still seeing her smile. She'd still smile. She smiled last time I saw her when she saw my dad. funny thing is we were always labeled as white people growing up you know they didn't care that my mom's family was from Mexico or who she was they didn't care about any of that it was you know we were white white people rich privileged white folks so rich we couldn't afford a tombstone or a funeral or in a grave or even a memorial for my mother. A bunch of her friends, people she knew, pitched in to provide a memorial for my mom. 
I don't think we had anything to do with it. I'm sure my dad probably donated something, but we didn't put together anything. We had nothing. All we had was her ashes. We, all we had was her ashes. We couldn't afford any kind of service for her. And we took her ashes to the Martinez Bay and dumped them in the ocean. It was all we could do. I wish we could have done something more for my mom. I wish I had a place that I could visit her, but I guess visiting the ocean, the bay, the dirty bay water is, that works too. To, to those people that just think that there's, Mexico is this wonderful, happy, peaceful paradise. My mom ain't around for you to say that to. And it really invalidates what they went through to try and get here. Despite my grandfather being one of those people, they knew life in America was better. And they, they did everything they could to get out of that, to get out of that mess and come here to America for a better life. But sometimes, just because you move, doesn't matter how far away you move, you bring your problems with you. That's what my grandpa did. He brought his problems right along with him and he didn't change. He was, he should never have been here. And yet, despite all that, I only imagine, like, the truth is, had none of that happened, I probably wouldn't even be an American citizen. I would, I do not think I would be in America. I would have been born in Mexico. Boy, would my life be different then. Anyways, I don't know what else to say about all this. I'm, I'm just going to wrap this up. I'm sure there was some kind of point or finale that I'm going to you know, add on to it at some point, somehow. I'm done. And Coulter's tomorrow. Keep your head up. Stay on the sunny side of the street. Count your blessings. And don't take my advice. Make America great again, guys.